Yeah, Assalamu alaikum. I'm Nana, your host, and today we'll be having an exclusive interview with Dr. Marja Muhammad, who is here for the 17th Regional Sharia Scholars Dialogue, or known as Muzakara in Singapore. Dr. Marjan here is a Senior Research Fellow, come the Director of the Research Quality Assurance and Publications Department at the International Sharia Research Academy for Islamic Finance Research Management Centre in SEF University. She is also a member of Sharia Advisory Council of Bank Nagara Malaysia. She also sits on the Advisory Committee of Experts of Lotus Bank Limited and Sharia Supervisory Board of Lotus Capital Limited, where both is based in Nigeria. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. <laughs> yes, it's so honored to be here to have this opportunity with you. Um, I do have a few questions um, in respect to your research and to your observations of in perspective of Islamic finance, of course. So jumping into the questions, um, as a fellow research, uh, senior research and director at ISRA, could you share some of the critical findings from your recent research? Um, and their implications, and also how has it actually influenced and the practicality of aspects of Islamic finance, particularly in policy making or product innovation? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you very much, Nana. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm so privileged for this uh, podcast interview. Uh, with regard to your question, uh, being a senior researcher who has been with ISRA. Our company's name is previously, before we consolidated with uh, NCF University, we, our company was called International Sharia Research Academy for Islamic Finance, ISRA. But then after we consolidated with NCF in 2021, then our name was rebranded to ISRA Research Management Center. So I've been with ISRA for more than 10 years. So being uh, one of the researchers who is long serving the institution, I've been involved in quite a few research which are uh, applied in nature and then some of them have policy implications. So, what I can share here, one of the research that we did was on value-based intermediation, whereby our role was to uh, come up with a report uh, to the industry on the level of adoption of value-based intermediation. So Bank Negara Malaysia in 2017 introduced this value-based intermediation initiative whereby the overarching principle underlying this VBI initiative, the acronym is VBI, so this VBI initiative is underlined with the principle of Makasib Sharia, which is objectives of Sharia. Apart from adapting or adopting other value-based uh, practices, like ESG, other uh, uh, SDGs, and ethical banking. But then, what differentiate value-based intermediation from other sustainability concepts is that the Sharia is the main driver. So when you put Sharia as the overarching principle, then the others will follow suit. Yeah, so that is one of the uh, value propositions that uh, Bank Negara Malaysia has uh, entrenched and then they have uh, propagated this idea for all Islamic banks to embrace because it's not easy to change the mindset of bankers from uh, mac profit maximization yes. Uh, mentality to value-based yeah. uh, mentality. So you are not just looking into profitability, but you are also looking other dimensions at uh, other dimensions like social governance. I mean those ESG criteria. Mm. So what we did in this research was that we surveyed uh, from two thousand seventeen. 
because the first report was uh, they call it um, like a prelim report the prelim report was uh, released in 2020 so that report uh, studied how Islamic banks in Malaysia have embraced the VBI initiative have adopted VBI initiative in their operations, in their product offerings, in their services uh, from 2018 until 2020, 2019. So our role was that what has been done further from 2019 until 2021. So one good finding that we um, we I mean, one discovery that we found in this research is that during COVID, Islamic banks, they accelerate their adoption of VBI mm -hmm. because they, because um, customers were being in difficult situation. Yeah. Right? So these difficulties have led uh, Islamic banks to assist their customers via various channels. So we can see that uh, banks collaborate with uh, Majlis Agama, uh, like here in like here in Singapore, uh, similar to Muiz. <clears throat> it's just that in Malaysia we have every state has yeah. its own Majlis Agama. So. Uh, Banks normally will collaborate with Majlis Agama uh, within Kuala Lumpur and Selangor, being the headquarters of most banks are located in uh, Klang Valley. Yeah. Then mostly they collaborated with this, uh, this uh, two Majlis Agama. So then, uh, what they did, an example was that they uh, they collaborate with. Uh, CIMB Islamic, for example, collaborate with uh, one entity, uh, training providers, and then also they collaborate with uh, Food Panda, mm. uh, the e e healing yeah. uh, service. So Food Panda, and then also Majlis Agama uh, Selangor, whereby they provide funds for these Food Panda motorcyclists to buy. Uh, motorcycle for them to deliver food during COVID time. So, with the advancement of uh, fintech and digitalization, the hype was very good. And then we can see from the previous report, the preliminary report that uh, Association of Islamic Banks uh, published in 2020 compared to our report mm. in 2021 is a, I mean, it's, it's a big jump in terms of the adoption, but definitely uh, it will take time for the whole industry to embrace because currently uh, it's only uh, 20, 20, 20, um, I can't remember the exact number, but uh, it is not all Islamic financial institutions. Uh, when I say Islamic financial institutions, because in Malaysia, we do have three models okay. of Islamic banks. One is full-fledged Islamic banks. Currently, we have five mm -hmm. full-fledged Islamic banks. The other model is Islamic subsidiary like Maybank. Here you got Maybank, yeah. right? So over there in Malaysia, we have uh, Maybank Group. Oh. Under, under Maybank Group, there is a dedicated Islamic bank, which is Maybank Islamic. Yeah. So it is a subsidiary. Okay. That is called subsidiary model. And then the last model is window model, similar to what Maybank Singapore yeah. offer, whereby Islamic is just being offered as a window services. Yeah. 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 So, uh, throughout the uh, the COVID period, I mean, within because although the mandate for us to study was just for one year period, yeah. but we did, I mean, we did extend our scope to the, the earlier than earlier than uh, twenty twenty one to twenty twenty, so that we can see what was the trend mm. during. Uh, 
the peak of yeah. COVID. Yeah. So, um, in terms of how the research has impacted or has some uh, meanings to the policy making, is that based on that Bank Negara will be able to see how many uh, Islamic banks have given their I mean their full commitment mm. in terms of uh, implementing the idea that has been noted by Bank Negara. So now Bank Negara in with regard to value based remediation, uh, Bank Negara lifts the initiatives to be uh, led by industry and so it is no longer regulator uh, led initiative so it is being passed to the industry to make it more industry initiative uh, okay 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 but i think it will take a while right because just now yeah. like i think living in this era of capitalism when we talk about value base mm -hmm. it's very difficult because exactly. people will still think about how do i how do i maximize profit through value base exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah so but i think is although it's a long shot mm -hmm. but i think over the years to come mm -hmm. given the opportunity and mm -hmm. with the growth of islamic finance i think people will mm -hmm. start seeing that actually the real value and then the yeah. profit will actually be coming on its own right exactly. it's like a by the way thing yeah yeah, yeah. Well, definitely the, the it, you can't achieve within uh one year or yeah. two years yes. it will take a lot of time yes. for every every single layers every single layers of um i mean coming from the bottom until the top to embrace mm -hmm. and in fact what we did at isra under isra consulting our business subsidiary we offer training to board of directors whereby we do have a session emphasizing on the role of makasi and value-based intermediation for them so that it become top-down approach yeah yeah, yeah. understanding yes. from the top and the the bottom, bottom yeah yes. because i think naturally like the instruction from the top to the bottom was quicker exactly. right it's okay you have to do this this is yeah. how we do things yeah. so with that being said how do you think like or rather would you have any specific strategies or initiatives that do you think singapore can adopt uh, adopt mm -hmm. for faster growth like you know for our development you know even though we are like ranked number one as mm -hmm. the finance hub yeah right but how can we align that with islamic finance or where can we you know sell it mm, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah i think uh, every country has its own uniqueness yeah. has its own constraint at the same time um the way i see how malaysia developed our islamic finance was through again top-down approach mm. which is uh, coming from regulator regulator industry so it's not much on the industry led but it's more regulatory led so when we talk about i mean if i may uh, give my opinion with regard to how Singapore can, I mean, leveraging on your strength yeah. being number one in the region, yeah. not only in the region, but Asia Pacific yes. as a whole. I mean, I saw la last night that you are number three after London. Yes. In New York, London and Singapore. Yes. So the best thing is the political will yeah political will from the top so how you can uh i mean make an appeal to all the uh to the government is infusing islamic finance indirectly so don't mention because it might be sensitive in the case of singapore when it comes to islam yeah i'm not sure whether that is the case or not is that the case there is some sensitivity yeah. i believe yeah, yeah because it's a free it's a free country where we can practice any religion exactly. that we want. yeah so to impose something uh, financially 
in the guideline of a religion, I think there's a very fine line that we yeah. cannot cross. So, what I can say is that it's better not to use Islam, but the spirit following Islamic teaching. So, if that is the way you observe in terms of government sentiment and then government approach to be more liberal instead of uh, infusing directly the Islamic element. So, one way or another to suit your current situation and your current circumstances is that you can infuse the Islamic teaching indirectly without naming it as Islam. Understood. So, like value-based intermediation yeah. just now is an excellent example. Yeah. You don't have to uh, use bombastic word, Islamic words, yeah. Yeah, all the jargons. Yes. But then, the most important thing is the underlying principles and the spirits must follow what Islam teach. Yeah. That might be one way, although you have to, I mean... It's like one big round. Yeah. yeah. But if that can it, appeal yeah. them, so I don't find any, any harm because in Islam, there is a maxim, there is a legal maxim says, Al-umur uh, bimaqasidiha, means uh, everything that we do is based on the intention. Yes. Yeah. especially in uh, financial transaction which means uh, what we consider in financial transaction is what is the substance yes. not based on the physical form yeah so since um, the government and the society is not in favor of Islamicity, then that might be one of the ways. And then, since banking industry is something which is highly regulated yes. by uh, MAS. MAS, then maybe you can venture into other sectors instead of going the banks. Yeah, into banks first. Because I heard yesterday they were saying that even Maybank, Isla Maybank Islamic branch here is struggling in terms of promoting. Mm. I talked to one of, uh, of ex Maybankers, uh, and then he mentioned to me, uh, it is very difficult for them to promote. There's uh, not much promotion possible. <laughs> yeah, because internally their management, they are regulated. Yeah, their management, uh, Maybank Maybank management itself doesn't allow the promotion. Mm. That's why the Islamic side cannot 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 push. Cannot push. Yeah, because they wanna push like you know just how we were talking about they wanna push the profit maximization. Exactly. Yeah. Because mm. they're seeing like, okay, yeah, we have this rich of products, but they're not really making a lot of money for mm. us, so let's put our attention to exactly. something. Else. And I think that's what's happening a lot in Singapore, irregardless mm. of the industry. Mm. Yeah, where um you know anything that is not profitable or rather deemed not to be profitable mm. profitable. Will just be parked at the side. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay, if you make money, then great for you. But like, um, yeah, we'll just push for what is yeah. right in front of us. Yeah, yeah, but okay. yeah, okay. So now moving on to academic institutions, mm -hmm. um, I would like to ask, how do you think like institutions, um, like INSEF, can contribute mm -hmm. to promoting a wider understanding and acceptance of Islamic finance, um, in Singapore especially because you know um, we have like madrasa schools mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but we do not really have a university or a school that can um, license or certify mm -hmm. um, individuals to take their mm -hmm. masters or their mm -hmm. PhD. So how do you think this can be implemented in Singapore. All right, okay. Um, one of value propositions that INSEF uh, has is that our programs is tailored made to the needs of our students. So what we did was that, I mean, when INSEF was firstly uh, established, we cater for we cater for the needs of uh, industry practitioners mm. who need the, I mean, those practitioners coming from conventional and then they want to learn more on Islamic finance. So we provide that. It's just that 
now uh, what we are offering expanded has expanded so what we offered now in addition to professional certificate now no longer called certificate of islamic uh, finance practice yeah. but it's called uh, master in islamic finance practice so there are two even uh, mifp program our mifp program has two uh, two stream one to cater for practitioners one to cater for those who like to go for academic studies yeah so and then on top of that very recently what we did was that we offered uh, EMIF, what we call E, uh, which is online, E, Master in Islamic Finance. So under this EMIF program, we are offering MBA in sustainability. And then we also do micro-credential. Micro so what I mean by micro-credential is that if let's say you have a lot of work commitments and then you are not able to uh, I mean dedicate yourself to completing yeah. uh, on strictly two years time so what we offer is that this micro credential you can take a few courses at your own sweet time and then once you have completed certain number of courses, there are details which I not yeah. I mean I'm not able to share in detail here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, once you have completed certain number of courses, then you will be getting your certificate, your master's degree. Mm. So the flexibility that we offer, which I think those from Singapore can uh, join us is that you can join online because the course is offered online mm. physical classes is optional if you would like to get more yeah more information then you go to our physical uh, campus there that is one option the other option that how we can assist uh, singaporean in deepening your knowledge in Islamic finance is that we can collaborate with madrasa or any uh, institutions which uh, which would like to offer certain degree yeah. and then we can have joint like program yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah joint program uh, certificate will be issued by INSEAD mm. but then the place of study will be yeah. Singapore. And that would also still be online based because exactly. right? the professors and yeah. the are basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, once in one semester maybe there will be visiting professor coming here yeah. to get more interaction yeah. with students. Yeah. I that see. would be one two ways where how you can I mean we at NCF can assist uh, the Singaporean. I think that'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let me think of all the organizations. <laughs> yeah. But I heard that uh, last night because last night we had dinner with Burgas. Ah. So someone was mentioning. I'm not sure whether it is still in effect now, but they were saying that they collaborate with uh, IAUM, International Islamic University. I think in they do. KF. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because some of the the people that I interacted with mm -hmm. are from under Pergas, but they mm -hmm. are with IUM. Yeah. Yes. So similar similar arrangement can be adopted. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Okay. So to wrap it up, right? Finally, finally, as we look into the future, inshallah, how do you see the landscape of Islamic finance evolving, especially in the Southeast Asian region? Okay. The way I see it is that everything will focus on fintech and sustainability that is the core reason why we choose those two themes for our muzakara and then we know that uh, singapore is very up to date yes. especially in fintech <laughs> so we say that that's why when we came up my team came up with the proposal for the for our team for the whole 
two days mm. program thing, then we say that we must emphasize on sustainability and fintech. Yeah, because that is the trend now. Yes, although we must um, acknowledge that our sustainability from Islamic perspective is much broader than what has been propagated by the Western yes. uh, thinkers. Ours is encompassing. And then those principles, it's not now. I mean, yeah, it yeah. has been promoted earlier, yeah. way back yeah. when our prophet was being yeah. sent to, uh, to this world. It's just that we were not able to relate it and then we ignore those teachings. Yes. So one good book that uh, Isra published in collaboration with Maybank Islamic in Kuala Lumpur, we translated the book written by, by Sheikh Al Qaradawi, uh, the late of Sheikh Al Qaradawi, on preservation on conservation of environment. Yeah from Islamic perspective. The book, if you read the book, you will say that if all Muslims apply what is written in this book, there is no issue of environment that we are facing now. Yeah, global warming. Yeah. <laughs> and then he mentioned that all these issues happen because of us. Yes, yes. I mean, who else, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the way he articulated his ideas was so excellent. And even as Prof. Shaf mentioned uh, during his opening speech, even the word, the choice of word, yeah, because yeah. the book was written in Arabic. Yes. So the choice of word that he used to describe uh, conservation in Arabic he chose a he did a very careful very carefully and then choosing the right word whereby in Arabic he put it riaya not haymaya because those have the same meaning quite the same meaning in 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 English or yeah. in Malay but then Arabic when you say riaya means you preserve what you have now but not only what you have now, but what you are going to have in the future. Ah. Yeah. If you talk about Himaya, it's just that no. now, like you are taking care of your children, uh, you are taking care of your like property. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, your yeah, property. Yeah. yeah. But then when you call Riaya, then it's beyond now. It's like your children, exactly. like the next generation. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So, um, you can you can order. I mean, the book we we do sell the book is just that because we we are not allowed to print a lot of books. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I I was hoping that we could bring some books here to share with yeah. uh, your community. It's just that we we were not allowed. They were saying that you will be questioned at the hostel. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said then better. Better don't. <laughs> because it's a, they confiscate. Exactly. <laughs> That's the last thing you want yeah. it to happen. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But again, you can uh, you can subscribe to okay. our IFKR. Oh, yeah. I have. Yeah. You, you know? Yes, I have. I have the IFKR app. Yeah. So, uh, if you... Uh, because uh, IFKR app can be downloaded free. Oh, yeah. And then also can be under subscription. Yeah. So, the paid subscribers are able to read the book online. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's yeah. not. It's not that much because I think you have a, an option whether to subscribe, uh, on monthly basis or yearly, year or yearly basis. Okay. Yeah. It, it's not much. It's just about. I can't remember exactly about one hundred fifty ringgit. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Marjan, for your time and your thoughts no and problem. your inputs. Again, no always mind-blowing me. But yes, um, I think um, Singapore has a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Southeast Asia region, or I think globally itself, um, with Islamic finance, has a long way to go. But I hope, you know, the industry, the, the practitioners, or I think irrelevant people can understand the importance of applying 
topic, um, you know, the teaching of our Sharia, you mm-hmm. know, why the importance, because I think it's always, there's more good than bad to it. Yeah. So, so I think, like you say, the niyat, the intention is the key, the vital mm-hmm. point to things. Mm-hmm. So I hope that, you know, all our viewers, our listeners, that take in everything and digest and understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and hopefully able to apply in our daily life as well. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. No Thank problem, you. my pleasure. It's an honor. <laughs>